Hey, um, thanks for sticking around, everybody. Um, those of you who have been here all day, um, you may have noticed that we've outlasted our, our police escorts and, <laughs> and a lot of the Homeland Security vehicles that were across the street. Most of them have left. Um, I mean, we, we tried to make it clear what today was, that we were coming together to organize and, and talk about where we go from here. Um, apparently, Homeland Security thought that was a threat, and they had to you know, roll in the troops, and, and they were a little scared by that. Um, and, and in some ways, that's ridiculous. I mean, we kind of showed them during the trial that when we said we were going like, to come together and sing outside the courthouse, people actually meant that. And you know, maybe their like, M16s that they had on the first day weren't that appropriate. Um, and, and maybe sooner or later, they'll get the message that um, we actually mean what we say. And you know, we're not really trying to hide anything. We're organizing here out in the open, talking about our plans and, and how we're going to you know, organize more actions from here, right out in the open in the middle of the city. Uh, we don't have anything to hide. But on another level, maybe Homeland Security was right to be that concerned. Maybe what we're doing actually is that much of a threat. And so often, we try to water down our message and try to make it seem less threatening. You know, so often, our opponents in, in the climate movement, the, the, those who represent the fossil fuel industry, try to criticize us and say, oh, they're trying to ruin the economy. And, and we reply and say, oh, no, no, we're not. Look, see, here's how we can still have all this economic growth. We can switch to clean energy and keep everything else the same. We can, we can maintain this kind of economic structure that we have. We can maintain this kind of corporate power structure that we have now. Don't worry, all you guys in power, that the economy works for right now. We're not going to shift any of that up. But for, somehow we haven't won those people onto our side yet. They, they, haven't, they haven't bought in to that message that we're going to shift the way we produce energy and keep everything else the same. And, and the fact is, that's not really true. We, we actually are threatening the economy when we're talking about moving away from fossil fuels. Um, there, there really is a fundamental difference between a fossil fuel economy and a renewable energy economy. And it does have major impacts, and it is actually a threat for those in power. You know, I grew up in, in West Virginia, where people have been mining coal, developing fossil fuels for 150 years. And, and we're taught when we were growing up there that that's what we had the potential to do. Um, and that that's where our economic development can come from in West Virginia. That's the only options that we have, um, is, is the economic development of coal. And, and we've produced more fossil fuels than anybody else over 150 years in West Virginia. And it's still one of the poorest states in the country. It hasn't led to the, the vast amount of wealth that, that is always promised. After, after 150 years of coal, West Virginia is the second poorest state in the country in terms of per capita incomes. It has the worst education system in the country, the lowest education rates. And, it, and it's the third lowest for life expectancy. And the things that, that, that actually seem to matter to people, um, they're almost the worst. It has one of the lowest standards of living. And it's not an anomaly. When we look at the richest fossil fuel resources, we see coal in West Virginia and Kentucky, oil in Louisiana and Mississippi. These are not the areas with the highest standards of living. They don't have the best education system, so the longest life expectancy. They're the worst in most of those categories. And that's not an accident. It's a fundamental part of the fossil fuel economy that leads to a concentration of wealth. Because when you have a limited resource, like fossil fuels, whoever controls access to that at the beginning, whoever owned that land at the beginning, or whoever had the government connections to get those leases at the beginning gets to set all the terms. They set the terms for their workers. They set the terms for their local communities. They set the terms for the regulatory agencies, as we're seeing now. And so it always leads to this massive concentration of wealth, a lot of riches for the few, and poverty for everyone else. And they've convinced a lot of those people in those communities that that's the only thing that they can strive for, and that sooner or later, their ship will come in. You know, that they're pulling so much wealth out of the ground, sooner or later, that's going to benefit the people that are doing the work and, and the people that live in those local communities. And, and they've convinced a lot of people of that. I mean, people in West Virginia still defend the coal industry because they think that sooner or later their ship's going to come in. And they've been, 
They've been making other people rich for 150 years, and they're still waiting for their ship to come in. But it's not coming, because that's how that economic model works. And when we shift to a renewable energy economy, nobody controls access to the wind. Nobody controls access to the sun. And so the wealth is more likely to flow to whoever does the work of harnessing that energy. And it leads to a, a distributed economic system, or at least more so than what we have now. And that's a threat. We have to understand that for those in power, a distributed economic system is a threat. Because the way that we've lost this democracy is that we have a massive concentration of wealth that's led to a massive concentration of political power. And most of, us, most of us have been squeezed out of that system. And, and a renewable energy economy is a threat to that. It's a, re, it's a threat to that concentration of wealth and power. And it leads to a distributed system. And for those whom the, the current economy works for them, they don't want to see that happen. And, and for years, our movement